Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Panda family. In this video, I will explain derivative controller with great clarity. Before I start with my explanation, let me tell you the outlines of this video. In this video, I will explain basics, output, log diagram, transfer function, physical understanding, significance, pros and cons of derivative controller. So let us start this video with first agenda. That is basics of derivative controller. See derivative controller performs differentiation operation. So output of derivative controller will be differentiation of input signal. So derivative controller performs differentiation operation. So output of derivative controller will be differentiation of input signal. If you have derivative controller over here where input signal is error signal and output signal is controlled signal then output m of t will be kd into differentiation of input signal with respect to time so m of t will be constant kd into differentiation of e of t with respect to time so derivative controller produces output that is differentiation of input signal you can observe here we have output in time domain usually we represent output in frequency domain to get output in frequency domain let us apply laplace transform if we apply laplace transform then this m of t now that will be m of s this kd is constant and here single differentiation that is s and e of t that is e of s here we are considering zero initial conditions so single differentiation that will be s into e of s right to get transfer function of this derivative controller we need to take ratio of output to input output is m of t in laplace domain it is m of s input is e of t in laplace domain it is e of s so m of s divided by e of s that is s into kd that is transfer function of derivative controller here one thing that you can observe see with derivative controller transfer function is s into kd what it means it means in numerator we have order one means here we are adding zero to the system so if you add derivative controller in your system then you will be adding zero in the system right now i will explain you derivative controller with standard second order system so here we have standard example of control system where with this control system here we have unity negative feedback here we have controller that is derivative controller for derivative controller one should know transfer function is s into kd right here we have error signal you can observe error signal is difference in between r of s and c of s that error signal that we give it to controller that is derivative controller and it is producing controlled signal m of s that we give it to standard second order system standard second order system is omega n square divided by s into s plus 2 zeta omega n here omega n is natural resonance frequency and zeta is damping constant now let us identify transfer function of this system transfer function means output c of s divided by input r of s for negative feedback one should know transfer function is g of s divided by 1 plus gs hs here hs is 1 why the reason is here we have unity negative feedback but what is g of s g of s is multiplication of these two block why the reason is these two blocks are there in series in series we need to do multiplication of gain of these two block so multiplication is s k d into omega n square divided by s s plus 2 zeta omega n here s is getting cancelled so in total g of s will be omega n square into kd divided by s plus 2 zeta omega n 
Now I will substitute that G of S and H of S is equals to 1 in this and we will be having transfer function C of S by R of S that is KD omega n square divided by S plus 2 zeta omega n plus KD omega n square. Here if you carefully observe, see in denominator we have order 1, S to the power 1 means order 1. So here in total transfer function is having one pole. While with second order system, how many poles are there? Two poles are there. If you compare this transfer function with standard second order system, then you can observe here we have two poles. While over here we have one pole. That is happening because of derivative controller. See derivative controller adds one zero in the system. And because of we are adding one zero in the system, we are improving stability of the system, right? So here with derivative controller, we are having denominator with order one. That is happening because of we are adding additional zero in the system and because of which stability of the system is getting better. But here one thing that you need to note down, we are having issues of steady state error in case of derivative controller. The reason is derivative controller cannot optimize steady state error, right? Derivative controller can optimize stability, but it cannot optimize steady state error. While in integral controller, I have explained that we don't have steady state error. But with integral controller, we are having issues of stability, right? Now, I'll explain you physical understanding of derivative controller. Physical understanding means how exactly signal is getting generated. Here, we perform differentiation operation. So, differentiation means what? Differentiation means rate of change of input signal with respect to time. And rate of change of input signal with respect to time is slope. So, here, output will be slope of input signal that you can say, right? So, here, if I say we have input signal which is happening like this, then we need to identify slope at all the instants and that magnitude of slope that will be my output with derivative controller. So here if I plot my output then you see at this instant here slope is positive. So over here output will be slightly positive. At this instant you can observe slope is 0 as slope is horizontal. So over here output is 0. Now from here onwards if you observe slope is getting negative. So here output is getting negative right. Over here if you observe slope is getting 0. So over here output is 0 right. So derivative controller performs what? It performs differentiation operation and differentiation means rate of change of input signal with respect to time that is also referred as a slope. Now, I will explain you advantages and disadvantages of derivative controller. See, derivative controller is having better stability compared to normal second order system that I have explained. Why? The reason is here we are adding zeros in the system. It is providing faster response by adding derivative controller, we improve response in terms of speed, right? With derivative controller, we will be having reduced overshoot. With derivative controller, we have less time to get stabilized output. But there are few issues with derivative controller, like it is sensitive to high frequency noise. See, in high frequency noise, slope of signal that is getting sharp. So, always with derivative controller, there is issues with high frequency noise, right? See, derivative controller is having issue of steady state error. It cannot eliminate steady state error and it is having limited use in slower system. See, derivative controller is having faster response. So, we don't use derivative controller with slower systems, right? And with derivative controller, tuning is challenging. So, tuning is challenging because of it is having faster response and it is sensitive to high frequency noise. 
so at higher frequencies tuning is bit challenging with derivative controller so that is how derivative controller is there with us i hope you are having fair enough idea about now what is derivative controller and how it is utilized in control systems till if any confusion is there just place that in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video